Welcome to Making Strides Against Breast Cancer, the kickoff event at the Ritz-Carlton. And I'm honored to be here today as an MC. My mom is a breast cancer survivor. 20-year history with the American Cancer Society as a volunteer, and it's my honor to have met Emily. Emily is our survivor speaker tonight at the kickoff event. Emily, thanks for being here, first of all. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. So let's talk a little bit about your cancer journey. Yes. Uh, you are now entering what milestone as a survivor? I am a little over one year um, into my survivorship. So let's talk about when you hit that one-year mark. Mm -hmm. Give so, me the emotions. Uh, it was a lot. Um, I was deemed cancer-free uh, upon having a bilateral mastectomy. They deemed that me cancer-free because it, in theory, took all the cancer out of my body. So um, that one-year mark was very emotional for me because it was cancer-free. It was, you know, after a big surgery, it was, it was big. Let's go backwards then okay. and how we found out we had cancer. So, um, like many women, I actually found it on my own, uh, doing a self-breast exam as I did every single month. And um, knowing my family history of cancer, I knew I needed to act on it right away, no matter how young I was at the time. I had just turned 26. So, um, regardless, I, I wanted to make sure I act on that quickly. So I went in and I saw my doctor, got the ultrasound. Unfortunately, ended up actually being misdiagnosed at first because I was so young. And um, about, I would say, nine or 10 months later, I finally got the correct diagnosis because my tumor had grown so large at that point that I decided to get a second opinion. And I think that's the key for a lot of people. Uh, first of all, self-exams at the age of 26, not all women are doing that. So I'd like you to look in the camera right now and talk to those women that are in their 20s that maybe aren't or aren't as diligent as you were monthly. So. I think if you're not doing your self, uh, monthly self-exams, guys, just feel it on the first. It's so important. It's your health. It's your life. It literally is. And you don't ever think you're too young for it to happen. Because me at 26, I am not even the youngest. I have met so many women in this community, the young breast cancer survivor community, throughout you know my year and a half of being in the weeds with this. Um, and, and I'm far from being alone. There are so many of us. And it's a shame because it is happening younger and younger. So just take take control of your health and your life and just do those self-breast exams. They take only five minutes tops. Um, and just stay on top of that because it's, it's your life. And I want to follow up with you on the misdiagnosis. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone that's watching has experienced someone in their life, if not them, someone they know that has been misdiagnosed medically. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of great doctors, there but are. doctors are human. They are. And they make mistakes. And you found something. You had this feeling there was something. I, I think that's another thing that I, I, I guess I want to touch on with you is that feeling that be persistent yes. because it's your body and at the end of the day you're your own expert exactly and although doctors and nurses and radiology technicians I mean they are the experts they go to school for this for many many years but no one knows your body like you know your body and like you said Maverick they're human um, so you know accidents happen or you know it's it's very uncommon for someone as young as me to have this diagnosis so it's understandable that they may have you know, we're a little quick with their exam or maybe miss some steps, you know, it happens, life happens, um, but just you have to be your own advocate. I mean, take my story and, and use that, you know, for your benefit. Don't, if you have a feeling that something is not right with your body, don't just, don't let yourself get brushed off just because you're too young or too healthy or too this or that, you know, because again, it's, it's your health. You only get one body, you got to take care of it and you have to be your own advocate. I got to tell you, I feel like hugging this young woman right here. I mean, just amazing story. And I'm going to give you, before we sign off here, I'm going to give you the final word. I'd like you to talk to the women out there of all ages with your story. You're here tonight as a survivor speaker. What's your final thought in talking to those women about themselves, their breast health, and their life? So, I mean... Oh gosh, now you put me on the spot here. Um, I mean, if you're so, if you're one of the women who are currently in the weeds with this, with breast cancer or any other major diagnosis in your life, if you're going through it, it's dark and it's scary, but it gets better. I mean, if you look around the room today, as you guys, I'm sure you'll get footage of that. Um, there's so many women that are here that are so just beautiful through all stages of their breast cancer journeys, or, or maybe they're not even a, a survivor or even a previvor. Um, they're just here supporting. It's it's an amazing community, and I'm. I'm, I never wanted to join this club, but I'm actually really happy I'm a part of it because there's so much love in this room, and I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Well, I think just in your words here tonight, you've inspired some people, not only for self-exams, but those that have gotten a diagnosis or maybe not the diagnosis they think it should be, and you're going to save lives with this conversation. Well, I hope so. Thank you, Maverick. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much.
my name is Tamara and I am from Bradenton, Florida. And I'm here tonight to um, help raise awareness for breast cancer. Um, I'm also working on the committee for Real Men Wear Pink. And I am a one year survivor. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about that, how you were diagnosed and, and how did you feel when you were diagnosed? Um, I actually found the lump myself. Um, and um, it was quite a shock because I consider myself to be a pretty healthy person. I eat right, I work out, do competitions. So um, it was quite a bit of a shock when I did find it. Um, but the one advice that I could give is to please, please do your self exams um, and have your mammograms. Um, last year this time I was going through chemo um, and I actually was able to do the walk last year in October just after finishing and um, I decided to put a team together last minute and I actually was able to raise over seven thousand dollars yeah so it, it's amazing how many people come together for this really special cause um, well like I said the self exams but most importantly um, eating right and and being healthy that's that's such an integral part of our life um, for longevity, um, your diet, and your exercise. But again, like I'll say, get your mammograms and do your self checks. Very important. My name is Heather Berquist. I've been uh, so a committee member with American Cancer Society for three years now. Um, I love being involved with the organization. My mother is a breast cancer survivor, going strong, so it means a lot to me. It's very close to my heart. I actually work for Starbucks, so we actually support the event, supplying all the caffeine for everybody to stay nice and caffeinated. It's important. It's important, people. So I absolutely love the event. Um, I'll take it over to you. I actually got involved with my twin sister, Heather. She brought me on. Um, wouldn't you know it, we have the same mother who is a breast cancer survivor. Uh, and I work for I-9 Sports. I'm a program director there. And it's really close to my heart, so I want to help out as much as I can. Um, I think it's awesome. It's really great to be able to be surrounded by people, young and old, and see that um, we can help this disease that has affected everyone. And it's not just one certain person. So I want everybody to know that breast cancer affects just about everybody. The percentage numbers are shocking. It's, um, it's something that really does affect families all over the world. And I want them to know that we're doing our part and I hope that they're doing their part. And it's a, the American Cancer Society is an amazing organization to be a part of. And there are so many ways to get involved, whether it's volunteering or choosing to be a vendor, anything. We will take it, we will utilize it to the fullest extent. You know, this is such a great event. Uh, I did it last year and uh, it's so rewarding to be able to give back to all these patients that have been through breast cancer. Uh, my mother-in-law, Sharon's mom, being one of them. And I feel like this is at least something that I can do to give a little bit back to the cause. I just thought, it again, it's just a great cause and um, just good to get together with people and do something that can really help the community and help the, the victims. First and foremost, it's good to do something that really benefits the people that have been exposed and have had cancer, and breast cancer in particular, it seems like it's so prevalent now that anything we can do to help and to advance the, the treatment and the cure is just fantastic. So I'm, I'm honored to be a part of it. chair of the Real Men Wear Pink campaign for Making Strides Against Breast Cancer. This is a campaign where we get 20 to 30, this year 35, men from the community 
um, of all aspects to come and be the face of breast cancer awareness. 35, 35 men a, this year, yes. Yes, it is. We have a great um, deal of support from the community, all sorts of doctors, oncologists, car salesmen, everybody. Everybody knows somebody affected by cancer. Everybody is willing to participate and have, comes out and has a good time. So on September 21st is our fourth annual Real Men Wear Pink Fashion Show, where the stores at UTC Mall dress up our men and they come out in full strut and show their stuff. And it's a, it's a great opportunity to see who we have and just have a good time. It's a family fun event for all. This is just, it, it's, it's overwhelming. We have more people in this event than we have had in any other year. It shows that people are really con concerned and care about our community and the health and welfare of all of us, families and friends. Thank you, because as an oncology nurse at, at a local community hospital, I find that a great deal of women need to know that there is this support for them. There's research, there's money, there is mammograms to be had, there is a lot of self-care that needs to go on and that is available for you. Well, this is our seventh year of being involved with the event, and uh, we lost uh, my mother to cancer, and she was 48, that was 27 years ago. And uh, when Jenny and I got married at seven years ago, we were looking for a uh, charity to donate to rather than getting a gifts. We asked registry. a wedding registry. So, um, so we chose this, and we began raising money, and we created the Wiseman Walkers. And so we usually have about 40 or 50 people that walk with us and uh, we raise money every year. Last year we decided to be the grand sponsor and uh, what, shortly after that we found out Jenny had breast cancer. So she is uh, one year uh, cancer free now and uh, doing great and uh, she's a great story. You know, early detection, early treatment is the way to go. Well, and I'll speak to this. I think um, what, what John went through with his mom, it's such a different story than what I experienced. Um, John's often said, unfortunately, I think Peggy's cancer was, it could have been, it could have been taken care of had she been to the doctor, had she been able to um, get the treatment she needed in time. I'm a different end of the spectrum where it was caught so early that it was treatable very easily just with radiation, no chemotherapy. So the goal I think here is not only finding a cure, but also helping women get the access to the screening that they need. Because oftentimes it can be caught so early that it can really, really um, have a great success story like myself and like many other survivors in the room tonight. Well, I would ask everybody to give, give from their heart. You know, just about everybody I know has, has a story where breast cancer has affected them or a loved one, somebody, family or friend. And I think the more we talk about it and the more we talk, encourage each other to be accountable, go to the doctor, seek, you know, seek early detection and, and treatment right away. You know, you want to get it when it's stage zero, not stage four. And so the more you can talk about it and hold people accountable. Did you go to the doctor? Did you get checked, up, checked on? Those are the type of things that, that, that create the opportunity for the doctors to catch it and fight, fight the disease on our terms, not the cancer's terms. Well, I think take away from it this, it, it's a lot of fun to get out there with friends and it's a good, enjoyable time. We raise a lot of money, we spend time together, and, and it, more than anything else, it causes awareness that there is a problem and we, can't, we haven't cured it yet, but we can certainly treat it early. I think for me, my husband says it's the breast day ever. I'm not into this stuff. I like this stuff.
want to thank BSAV for the audio visuals tonight. Sarasota Plastic Surgery Center for our valet parking sponsor. Gold Coast Eagle, Siesta Key Rum, Johnson Brothers Liquor Company. You give them a little more, huh? Okay, see where you are. Beniva Flowers and Plantscapes and Affairs in the Air. Tap Snap Photo Booth. I saw that getting utilized heavily. And Starbucks and Nothing Bunt Cakes for the sweet treats and coffee. Thank you to Avon, the national presenting sponsor of Making Stides Against Breast Cancer. Avon representatives, customers, and team members are a force for good in promoting women's health. In 2018, Team Avon was 6,600 member, 6, members strong, raising more than $800,000 for the American Cancer Society's breast cancer programs and services. And since the launch of the Avon Breast Cancer Crusade in 1992, Avon has contributed more than $800 million to breast health. We also want to extend a big thank you to Zeta Tau Alpha Sorority. As the National Survivor Ambassador of Making Strides, Zeta volunteers will give of their time to support more than 200 walks in communities nationwide. Alongside all these sponsors, our event sponsors also serve as leaders in the fight against breast cancer. You heard from our presenting sponsor. We thank them for their donations and their team fundraising. Thank you to our 2019 event sponsors. We welcome our gold sponsor, Feld Entertainment. Hope you had a chance to check out the experience outside. Uh, Nathan Benderson Park, Sarasota Memorial Cancer Institute, Wealth Strategies Partners, Truly Nolan, Van Groff Williams, Children's World Business World, Cox Chevrolet with the awesome Tahoe over there in the men's corner, Florida Cancer Specialist, Tropicana, 21st Century Oncology, Manatee Memorial Healthcare System. Now, of course, to help get the word out about the event, we also have our 2019 media partners. We want to thank them as well for making the word out there so people know about breast cancer and the fight we're conducting right here in Sarasota and Manatee County. We want to thank ABC7, the Sarasota Herald Tribune, iHeart Media, SRQ Media, Manatee Educational Television, and Society Bites Radio for their support. Now, as we said earlier at the start, what unites us ignites us. Take a look at this slide to see how your support in 2018 helped those in our communities. We can't save lives. We can't provide free lodging. We can't answer your calls 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And we can't fund research without the support of the many sponsors who raise their hands and say, I'm in. I'm in this fight against breast cancer with you. So please join me once again in thanking all of the sponsors for our 2019 Making Strides Against Breast Cancer event. Today we need to do two things to fight breast cancer. We're going to give you two ways to become a member of the American Cancer Society team and help attack breast cancer from every angle. Now first, we need you to become a leader of a strong fundraising team, and second, we need you to connect with us on social media and invite your friends and family and coworkers to join us in saving more lives from cancer. Our event participants are equally as important as our sponsors. And you know why? Because every single donation, every single dollar, no matter how big or small, helps someone who has been touched by breast cancer. United, we are ignited against the breast cancer fight. Friends, cancer doesn't stand a chance when we're united together in this fight. So why are you here today? What ignites your passion? What gets you all fired up to do the life-saving work of attacking cancer? The important work of taking time out of your day to fundraise for the American Cancer Society's attack on cancer. For being here tonight, maybe you yourself have heard the words, you have cancer and you're working to ensure no one has to hear those words again. Maybe your wife or sister or mother 
or even your father or brother was diagnosed with breast cancer. And this is your way of doing something about it. Maybe you're here because your company is sponsoring the event, so you came to support your company. Breast cancer death rates have declined by 40% between 1989 and 2016. In real numbers, that's more than 348,000 lives saved. There are more than 3.5 million breast cancer survivors in the United States today, and that number keeps going up. Now the downside is that there are still too many being diagnosed. The impact sitting right beside you at your tables, whether it's $5 or $5,000, you are making an impact. Now back in January of 2017, Sorry, sorry, jumped ahead. Sneak preview. The American Cancer Society is, is tackling breast cancer from every angle, but the life saving work happens with each participant. Now, breast cancer is the most common cancer among American women, except for skin cancers. It's the second leading cause of cancer death in American women after lung cancer. It attacks far too many people we know and that we love. It attacks far too many people we know and our loved ones far earlier than they've already been diagnosed, far earlier than we're ready to accept. Younger and younger are getting diagnosed with breast cancer. But what, what cancer can't do? It can't keep us from working to ensure no one faces breast cancer alone. So we unite today, you, me, all of us in this room, and millions across the country, to make strides against breast cancer. We talked about the survivors. We also talked about the lives saved. But we also talked about younger getting diagnosed. So I'd like to invite Emily Rhodes, a breast cancer survivor in November, to share her story. Emily? Good evening, everyone. My name is Emily Rhodes, and I am a 28-year-old breast cancer survivor. All right, so before I dive into my experience, I'd first like to thank you guys so much for joining us this evening as we kick off this year's Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Fundraising Season. Yes. <laughs> as you look around the room, I hope it really hits home to you the impact that your donations make. Um, the impact is si standing right in front of you in this podium. The impact is sitting right beside you at your table. And whether it's $500 or $5,000, as Maverick said, you've made an impact, so thank you. Back in January of 2017, one month after my 26th birthday, excuse me, <laughs> um, I found a lump in my left breast. And for any woman, that's going to be a big red flag. We've all been trained to watch out for that since we were young, as long as I can remember. For me, I was even slightly more sensitive to it, considering my family's history with cancer. I have a cousin who fought gynecological cancer in her 20s. Um, I have a grandmother who fought it in her 40s an aunt who fought it in her 50s. My father has melanoma, both grandfathers had prostate cancer, and my mom and my other grandmother have had cancerous skin cells cut out. So obviously, though I had not received any type of genetic testing at that point, it seemed pretty obvious to me that I was at risk too. So I quickly made an appointment to, with my family doctor who then referred to me uh, to get an ultrasound done. And after a very interestingly quick imaging appointment, I was told by the tech, it's just a fibroadenoma, it's no big deal, it won't kill you, and if you ever want to get it out, just go see a plastic surgeon and they'll take care of it for you, but it was, it was no big deal. So happy with this good news, I ended up two weeks later moving out to Austin, Texas. Fast forward to October of that same year, my non-cancerous lump suddenly just doubled in size. And though I have a hard time um, remembering my body before all the treatments and surgeries, I remember, clear as day, looking down and seeing this golf ball sized lump just protruding from my chest at this point. So thank God for having crazy persistent women in my life because if it wasn't for their persistent nagging, sorry mom, um, I wouldn't have gone back to the doctor. 
I was running two companies. I was at the height of my career. I didn't have time for silly doctor's appointments, but I made the appointment and I'm glad I did because I was officially diagnosed on November 30th, 2017, just two weeks before my 27th birthday with grade three, stage three, triple negative breast cancer. My tumor was six centimeters large at this point, and it was given the opportunity to grow to the size of basically an egg or a lime, if you guys want to visualize that, um, all because the original radiology tech deemed me too young to be taken seriously and too young to have breast cancer. But I wasn't, and I did. After I was diagnosed, things progressed really quickly. Um, within three weeks, I started my chemotherapy treatments, a dense dose, uh, I'm sorry, a dose dense of the notorious Red Devil chemotherapy, along with a mixture of another pretty heavy hitter. And my Christmas gift in 2017 was quite literally my first taste of poison. If I had a dollar for every hour I spent on, in the middle of the night when I couldn't sleep, pouring through all of the resources on the American Cancer Society's website, I'd probably have enough to pay back all of my medical bills. Um, everything from understanding my diagnosis to my treatment and the side effects to surgeries and reconstruction, the American Cancer Society had answers to all of those questions. And the wealth of knowledge I found on cancer.org, which is ACS's website, turned out to be a huge source of comfort and empowerment as well. Speaking of comfort, I'd like to share with you one of the biggest impacts ACS had on me during my fight. Um, losing my hair was one of the most traumatic things I have ever experienced in my life. And to those who have not walked this path, I know it probably sounds a little silly, I get it, but for me, it wasn't the mastectomy that did me in, it was the hair loss. Through the American Cancer Society, I was gifted a wig and a nice, really, qual really nice quality wig. And when I say I was gifted this wig, I wasn't just like handed a bag and said, all right, good luck, be on your way. Um, no, I was actually taken in. They, they sat me down. They, they talked to me about all the different wig types and how to wear it and how to clean it and how to treat it and all these things. They empowered me with the knowledge that I knew to go forward. And as my hair started falling out, having that wig and, th and that knowledge gave me a sense of comfort that really helped me get through. So after five months of IV chemotherapy, I endured a bilateral mastectomy and 30 rounds of radiation. And can you guess where I spent all of my sleepless nights again? And of course, it was ACS's website, cancer.org. Um, in fact, I still reference ACS's website as a survivor today because they have so many resources from prevention to you know, treatment to survivorship. It's an amazing resource. And I'm truly, uh, truly blessed to be standing here today as a survivor, and I do think a lot of that has to do with American, American Cancer Society's commitment to research and finding a cure. In fact, I know it is. So ladies and gentlemen, as you go forth this fundraising season, I hope you remember this. Your donations are tangible. Hug any one of my pink sisters and you'll feel it. Your donations have directly affected the length and the quality of our lives. You saw that amazingly long train. You guys, you guys saw it yourself. And your don donations honor the loved ones that have left this world too soon. Remember them fondly and know that they're smiling up in heaven knowing that one day their grandchildren may be able to live in a world without cancer. Cancer is ugly and it takes so much that cancer will never be able to mask the beauty of all of our gorgeous survivors and thrivers. You guys saw them earlier. And cancer definitely hasn't been able to take the love out of this room. And for that reason, we win. And we continue to win every single day until cancer is an eradicated disease. And with that, I'd like to thank you guys all for this, your time this evening. Standing up here and sharing my experience, experience is an absolute honor, and I hope on behalf of my fellow Pink Sisters that I've made you guys proud, because I know I'm proud of every single one of you guys for continuing to put one foot in front of the other in, front, in the face of something so scary. Thank you again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Yeah. For a second, but please keep standing. So I met, I wanted to meet Emily before because I knew to be introducing her tonight, and I didn't really know her full story completely. And Charles Clapsaddle from Manatee Educational TV is like, hey, why don't we do a quick interview? So literally, I found out about Emily's story interviewing her. And uh, she was a little choked up and nervous in telling that story. And as she told it to the television cameras on Manatee Educational TV, and she told it to you, what I told her afterwards was, at such a young age, and then the misdiagnosis and, and her experience. 
and everything that she went through, she is going to save countless lives, and we cannot thank you enough for the courage to tell the story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. That's what it's about, ladies and gentlemen. Right there. That is why you are here tonight. Emily is why we are here. 26. And then it's nothing. And she knew. So we're all passionate about this. But it takes money to fund new and better ways to prevent and cure breast cancer. It takes money to ensure that the patients can get free rides to treatment can get the wigs, can get all the resources they need at cancer.org, even after diagnosis. It takes money for our caring trained staff to answer those calls 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Now remember we told you earlier there were two ways you could become a part of the American Cancer Society team. The first way to join the American Cancer Society in this fight against breast cancer is to sign up as a team leader and build a team of fundraisers. Lisa Quinn is our 2019 Making Strides event chair, and she's going to tell you exactly how to do this. Lisa? Thanks, Maverick. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. I'm really honored to be here tonight and join all of you and hear the stories. I'm really humbled by everything that I've heard since I've been volunteering with American Cancer Society. And um, what I want to talk to you about tonight is um, really how, um, what, where does your money go? And talk about um, how when you, we're going to raise money, where, what happens with that. So let me talk to you a little bit about that. So the first $500 that you raise, that can help 10 patients and caregivers with one night of free lodging and travel for cancer treatment. $50 can help provide a breast cancer patient with one-on-one -on -one peer support from a breast cancer survivor. $25 can help provide one person to get to free information, like Emily just talked about, how many times she went on that ACS um, website. So $25 of your money can help one patient go and seek that help. We, all, we can only make that happen with money raised by generous people like you when you become a team leader. So let's talk about, would you like to sign up today? So we're going to walk you through a little bit about what does that look like. So it's your pledge to the cancer survivors in this room. The breast the brave people who have battled cancer, which you've seen a lot of people today in the room, and you know who, who some are no longer with us. And also, some of us have also heard the, those words, you have cancer. Some of us might hear those words one day in the future. It's your pledge that you choose to take the fight in their honor, in their memory that you won't stop until we win this fight. So who is with us? Now is the time. So you will find a card on your table. We're asking you right now to take the first step in fighting back by filling out a card tonight. So if you'll take a moment and find that card on your table. Everybody will just take a moment and find that. There's also a second way to also identify that is on your phone through an app through the App Store. You search for the American Cancer Society and go to the fundraising app. You can download that as well and sign up to be a team leader and then join a team. Either way, once you become a team leader in one of those ways, you can start to earn, raise money for us. So if I can have some volunteers, 
help me. Okay, so I'm going to ask all of you at the tables to take a moment and fill out those cards or take a moment on your app and sign up for a team. And I'm going to have my volunteers go around the room and we have a gift for you tonight if you sign up. It's a pink insulated lunch tote. So if you're already registered online as a team leader, hold up your hold up your hand for us and we'll give you a gift. So I see some hands up. So take a minute and do that for us and so we have a gift for you. in the mail like I did I received this in the mail you'll receive it in the mail and it will give you all the information a welcome kit to tell you what to do with your new team and it will include uh, what you need to let you go online to making strides for breast cancer that's all thank you so much I look forward to seeing you at the walk October 19th Our event chair, Lisa Quinn, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I feel like we lost the room a little bit. Can I get a shh? I know it's exciting to get cards and gifts, but shh. There we go. Very nice. Excellent. Everyone's contribution matters when you commit to the fight to end breast cancer. It doesn't matter how big or how small, the impact is still great. Some individuals achieve fundraising excellence and are welcome into the Grand Club or even the Pace Setters Club. Our Grand Club members achieve extraordinary results by raising at least $1,000 for their Making Strides event. This is in one calendar year. The Pace Setters Club is an elite group of individual fundraisers who raise at least $2,500 and a Pace Setter team raises at least $25,000 collectively. Making Strides Sarasota Manatee has been fortunate to have the support of a pace setter team for the past four years. Join me in celebrating Kathy King and Team Pookie. I'd like to ask them to stand. If I could get Team Pookie to stand, they have raised alone, this team, $73,360 over just the past five years. We can't thank Team Pookie for their dedication to the mission of the American Cancer Society. Thank you very much. Now please your, turn your attention to the screens behind me as we recognize our 2018 Grand Club and Pace Setters Club members. If you are here, please stand. We want to recognize you and thank you. And let's give these 2018 Pace Setters a big round of applause.
And the Grand Club members from 2018, if you are here, please stand to be recognized. We thank you for your support. And now let me introduce to you a group of people who are members of one of these clubs. These are ladies that are passionate on making strides and have been longtime supporters of the American Cancer Society's life-saving programs and resources. Please welcome Raylene Gaines, Allison Minardi, Michelle Olivo, and Kathy King to the stage. Hi, I'm Raylene Gaines. I first became involved with Making Strides Against Breast Cancer about 14 years ago when a friend asked me to join her team. Two years later, my mom had her first scare. She quickly underwent a, lump a lumpectomy with a biopsy to follow. Fortunately, that tumor was benign. But that same year, I had two friends diagnosed with breast cancer, one who is now a survivor and one who has since lost her battle. The following February, my mother was diagnosed with DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ, um, the most common type and at its beginning stage, so nothing to worry about, they said. But upon further testing, they found additional invasive tumors that would need to be removed and then a five-year hormone treatment plan to follow. So my mother decided to have a double mastectomy with this second scare. Knowing so many affected by cancer, I then decided I had to get involved even more and create a team of my own. My team formed in 2007 with just a couple of friends and my mother's biggest supporter, my son Shane, who couldn't be here tonight, he's usually with me every year. Uh, Shane has worn pink tutus and bras to the walks. <laughs> and he's even stolen more than half of my sponsors, my past supporters through the years. Um, today my team consists of over 25 participants and it continues to grow. Uh, I use Facebook to advocate, um, I send emails to friends and family, and I always reach out to my past donors in person or by phone, it just seems to mean so much more. Uh, one year my co-captain and I held an open house with a variety of vendors that gave back a percentage of their sales. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that there's so many restaurants in town that if you just call them, they will give back a percentage. So you can do like fundraisers that like, I know Applebee's is one, Bob Evans is another. I mean, I'm sure there's more that I, but we did that one year and we raised a lot of money um, doing that. Um, we also offered incentive prizes for the top fundraisers on my team. So I would just go out and buy anything pink and it just, it worked. People tend to want to raise money. Um, not gonna lie, it was a lot of work. Um, at times I felt like with such little return, for years people would join my team but didn't give much effort to raising any money. So discouraged, I decided to reach out to my employer for help. Um, you don't know if you don't ask. So um, thanks to Neal Communities for their generous matching donations, I reach paysetter status every year. Being a paysetter is one of the most important things I've ever accomplished. When asked what do I get out of being a paysetter, um, well, I may not be a first responder in my profession, um, but I know that being a pace setter, um, I'm saving lives. I, I, I am, I'm saving lives. That's pretty special. When you're passionate about something, it shows. It's infectious and people wanna help, especially when it's personal. Uh, my best friend is currently battling colon cancer and I referred her to the local American Cancer Society for assistance and she was so grateful. She's had so many, they have so many wonderful programs and I feel like I'm the lucky one to be able to advocate for them. The Making Strides Against Breast Cancer event isn't just about putting on a pretty pink bra and walking three miles. It's so much more than that. It's about raising funds to find a cure someday and providing services to the people in our community. Thank you for having me. Hi, my name is Allison, and I am a former private aholic. So for the first 36 years of my life, I made somewhat of an art form out of keeping my personal struggles to myself. It wasn't because I was embarrassed about them, it is because I really truly believed that I was strong enough to handle them all by myself. So that view got completely shattered on December 9th, 2013, 
when my doctor called to let me know that I have cancer. Um, give me a second. I was 36, my son was two, and for the first time in my life, I really did question if I was strong enough to handle this by myself. But true to form, I did keep it very private for a very long time. Through the scans, the testing, the tremendous amount of surgeries, and the ultimate start of chemotherapy that I had to go through. But eventually, word did start to get out about what I was dealing with. And you know what? My life did not end. <laughs> People saw my struggle, and they wanted to help. They wanted to support me. I would get uplifting texts and cards from coworkers and friends. There was food delivered to my house every week that I went through chemotherapy. Strangers on the street who recognized what I was dealing with would stop and offer me a hug. It was from that experience that I realized that nobody, including my very private self, should ever feel that they need to face cancer alone in the dark. So I decided to get involved, and I started a team in October of 2014. It was Team Jam back then, nothing fancy, just the initials of my family, Jacob, Allison, and Michael, my husband, who's here tonight. And I had it in my head that my shirts just had to encapsulate my mission, my why. Why am I here? Why am I walking? So my shirts, I thought about them, and I was like, what is it that's going to deliver this? So here's what I came up with. Every person on my team wore a shirt based on the relationship they had to me. So for example, my husband's, I walk for my wife and all the other wives. For my parents, I walk for my daughter and all the other daughters. My son, I walk for my mommy and all the other mommies. Someone who is a complete stranger to you or to me is someone of immeasurable value to somebody else. And they are indeed worth fighting for, and as I've learned through this experience, showing a little bit of vulnerability for, coming out of my shell for. So that's what I've done over the last several years. Um, I've been a pace setter ever since I've started a team. And that's not because I made it a goal. It is because I stepped out of my comfort zone, which was private, and shared my story. I invited people along on my journey. They felt connected to me. And that's how I generated this amazing network of support that I have now. So how do I fundraise? Real quick, um, I'm sort of a fitness junkie. So I've always had donation fitness classes. Um, that seems to be what works best for me. But if you love golf, host a golf outing. If you love wine, host a wine tasting. But invite everybody here tonight. We will join you. Right? Just do what you love. Invite your family, your friends, and honor this great cause. So my simple message to you tonight is just lead with your passion, inspire with it, connect with people, let them in, because that's when the amazing progress is going to change and happen. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Michelle Olivo. I am a breast cancer survivor. In fact, exactly one month from today, I will celebrate my five-year diagnosis date on my mom's birthday. <laughs> when asked what motivated me to get involved and why I continue to stay involved, my answer was very simple. I am passionate about things I believe in, and I believe in life without cancer. It's amazing how three simple words, you have cancer, can stop your entire life and bring you such fear. It's personal, it's selfish, and it's for everyone who has ever been faced with it. I know the battle, and it's not an easy one. If I can support this amazing cause that is so near to my heart and help one less person have to armor up, then count me in. For me, creating my team a girl's breast friend with all my breasties, yes. being, a team, <laughs> yeah, like that. being a team leader and a survivor, participating in fundraising, volunteering on our Real Men Wear Pink Committee, and walking at our Making Strides Against Breast Cancer event gives me the power to show cancer who's in charge. 
Yes, it's time consuming to volunteer and sometimes it's uncomfortable to ask for donations. However, the reward and benefits of knowing that we are helping to make a difference by providing resources for those affected makes it well worth it. Every year I strive for more. I'm always adding to my team and adding to our funds. That is how I got to the Pace Setter Club. You also have the ability to make it your own. You can get as creative as you'd like. Whether you just want to share it with friends and family, whether you want to use social media outlets and technology, or whether you want to put activities together, there's a way for everyone to be part of something bigger than each of us. This year, I'm taking my fundraising to the next level by adding events of my own. One event I am doing is Cycle for a Cure at Cycle Bar on University, and wow. even Sip for Survivors at Bohemio's Wine Bar in Sarasota. I invite or even challenge everyone here to get involved with our fundraising mission to help us fight and someday win this battle. You will be amazed how rewarding and simple it is. Everyone can do something to support. I will continue to do this mission as long as I'm able, not only for all of you or even myself, but for my two amazing children, Ariana and Dominic, who are here with me tonight, so they will hopefully never be faced with this fight. Cancer picked the wrong girl to fight. She touched my breast. I kicked her butt. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kathy King. I'm from Team Pookie. We have a great time on our team. I enjoy being a part of it, and they are amazing. We are a national uh, pay setter team, and, and that's amazing. So kudos to them. Come on. There you go. Um, I want to know how many chemo bell ringers there are in here. Is anybody? Look at them hands. Look at them. Be proud of them because there's nothing better than that last day of chemo and you hit that bell. That is amazing. You know, they get to start growing their hair back. They get to start tasting food again. They get to be a part of life again because they fought the fought. And it's amazing. You right there, you fought it. I got you. And we, as pace setters, we fight every day for you guys. I mean, it's, to be a part of this is amazing. I have been a part of this stage for three years. And every time, I'm so excited to be a part of it. I think being a pace setter is saying, I'm going to give you 110%. I mean, and, and everybody in this room needs to do that. There's not one person in here that doesn't need to give 110. It's an amazing what these women go through. I mean, Florida Cancer Center, I've seen it. I sit, long story, but I sit there and see these bell ringers. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, the chills you get when they get up there and do that, they get to start their lives all over again. And that's kind of what I want you guys to do as pace setters. I want you to go out there tomorrow and start your life fresh, new, $2,500, that's what we're asking for everybody in this room. That's all we want is for you guys to come out there and be, be champions, be pace setters. I, it is an amazing thing. I challenge everybody in this room to take that time. I've come up, what a killer idea. All you need is some sunscreen and that's it, and some cardboard. I don't know, in Manatee and Sarasota County, we've had a small issue, but I've solved it. I've come up with this new plan. Okay, you ready? Here we go. There are street corners available everywhere in Manatee and Sarasota County, and I think we need to just go out there and donate. I mean, this is a big thing. Come on, let's be a part. Hey, you don't have to knock on anybody's door. You just stand out there with your hand out, and it's a wonderful thing. It does. It works. It does. It does. And I think it's simple and something that we could all be a part of. I don't really want to see y'all on street corners, but if you are there, I will donate. So guys, get out there, be a part of this. It's an amazing cause. These people work so hard. I mean, Team Bookie, I mean, they work 
incredibly hard to be a part of this, and you guys need to. It is a fun thing. You can do all kinds of fun things. Stop by. I'll give you, other than this cardboard sign, some great ideas. <laughs> Thanks again, Kathy King. I'll thank them, so I'm not just like photobombing their picture. How about we give it up one more time for Alice and Michelle, Raylene, and Kathy? Yeah. And I think, you know, as the son of a breast cancer survivor, oftentimes people will say, and, and this was a great representation right here, you had a couple of survivors and you have a couple of people that have been affected in their life by family members. So whatever side you're on, that's something to take away from the four of them. The other thing that I think I want you to take away from all of those great ideas is don't make it complicated. What do you love? Who do you love? Who's in your circle? Ask them to be a part of it. If you ask them to be a part of something that means something to you, they're going to become a part of it. It's that simple. Next, I'd like to introduce Carrie Lewis and Joy McLean. They are the co-chairs of the 2019 Real Men Wear Pink campaign. So let's give both of them a warm welcome. All right, Joyce making her way to the stage. We know that while one person may be facing a cancer diagnosis, it really takes a team of incredible supporters to help them along their journey. From oncologists, to family members, to coworkers and more, we're all in this together to help with the ones we love and care about. Breast cancer affects everyone, women and men. That's why we're recruiting men to fight breast cancer through the Real Men Wear Pink program. These distinguished group of community leaders is determined to raise awareness and money to support the American Cancer Society's mission and to save more lives than ever before from breast cancer. It is our pleasure to introduce the Real Men Wear Pink candidates. Gentlemen, please join us in the front of the stage. <laughs> Jeff Boudry, Casey Clow. Brian Cooper, Dr. Chris Davis, Byron Diamond, Dominic DeMeo, Jern, Joe, oh, sorry, Joe, Joe Ernst, Ray Gardner. Come on, guys, don't be shy. Justin Borrell, Eric Gross, Andy Gus, Anthony Holtz, Brandon Johnson, Maverick Johnson, and Paul Johnson. Dr. Fadi Kayali, Brandon Oropesca, Kobe Leach, Dr. Paul Lento, Eric Lewis, Jared Light, Sammy Lynch, Dr. Michael O'Neill, Damian O'Gordon, Michael Patatui, Justin Ray, Huey Sh Hugh Shields, sorry you, Scott. Short. Jim Talkey, Kevin Thompson, Jimmy Vines, Chip White, John Wiseman, and Adam Zuko. Let's give these men a huge round of applause and thank you to all of them. Please join Sarasota Manatee's Real Men at one of their upcoming Real Men Wear Pink events. First, our men will strut their stuff on the runway at the third annual Real Men Wear Pink Fashion Show at the Mall at University Town Center on September 21st. Then, enjoy a trolley ride to five of Sarasota's favorite sports bars and crawl for a cure with us on September 28th. Visit the Real Men Wear Pink table on your way out to get more information. 
Thank you again, gentlemen, and you may be seated. Remember we told you uh, earlier there were two ways to become a part of the American Cancer Society team. Now the second way to join the cause is to connect with us socially and share your passion for the fight with your incredible social network. Anybody heard of social media? Anybody? Who's Facebooking right now? Instagramming? Snapchatting? Not while we're talking, please. I'm only kidding. Now on Facebook, Making Strides Sarasota Manatee and Real Men Wear Pink Sarasota Manatee are on Facebook and on Instagram. Just search for them, Making Strides Sarasota Manatee and Real Men, Real Men Wear Pink Sarasota Manatee. And on Instagram, Making Strides Sarasota Manatee and Real Men, Real Men Wear Pink Sarasota Manatee. Easy for me to say. What I'd like you to do now, if you have been doing some social networking, is kind of pull up those phones now and follow those pages and like those pages, and you can help us connect on those. There's also some hashtags you can use if you want to save these in your notes on your phone. Hashtag MSABC, SRQ, MAN. Hashtag Making Stride Sarasota Manatee. Hashtag Real Men, SRQ, MAN. Now, if you've already committed to be a team leader, now's the time to start asking others to join your team. If you plan to join the fight in some other way, let your friends and followers know why you're with us and that passion we talked about. Anyone who signs up online and raises $25 either online or via the mobile app will earn a United swag. You can choose from one of three items featured on the slide. Put all that you've learned here today, the ideas, the thoughts you have, and take action. Get your swag, but most importantly, help save lives and continue the fight. Now aside from becoming a team leader, we have one more opportunity for you to make a greater impact. Getting involved with the American Cancer Society, the Cancer Action Network, or ACS CAN, the Society's nonpartisan advocacy affiliate. I'd like you to join me in welcoming Mary Ann Bolduck, our ACS CAN volunteer. Maverick. Good evening. Um, I'd like to join the others in thanking all of you for being here tonight. I know that all of us are here today because we have a personally either fought breast cancer or because we care about someone who has fought. Every single one of us in this room has a story about how cancer has touched our lives. My ACS star story started in 2010 when my sister Sue was battling breast cancer. That's her. Um, we walked a track, and I made her a promise that I would keep walking, I would keep fighting, I would keep raising money, and I would be her voice. Uh, she had already endured surgery to remove the cancer in her breast, which had metastasized to her liver, and a total of three brain tumors. She was a fighter, and she was not going to go down without a fight. She was our little mighty mouse, um, little package, big fighter. Sue's story is also my story, um, and the story for her daughters. She has three beautiful daughters who I continue to do this for. Through my volunteering with ACS, I have been able to meet some of the most amazingly generous people, both staff and volunteers, every one of which is committed to fighting cancer through fundraising, education, and access to care. I truly feel that anyone, any single one of us in this room and out there can make a difference. Whether you are a 70-year-old cancer survivor talking to legislators about an upcoming bill, or a seven-year-old who has been fundraising with her kiki, 
since she was two years old in honor of Aunt Sue, who she never got to meet. Many ACS CAN members are breast cancer survivors and caregivers. They are leading the way, telling Congress and our state's legislators that we need to make, have them make fighting cancer a top priority. Thanks to advocates like myself and you, bipartisan support for fundraising, for funding cancer research is strong. And last year, we played a big role in getting Congress to pass the biggest increase in research in more than two decades. That is the power of your voice, your voice to activate Congress's power of the purse. It is true that Congress holds the purse strings to fund cancer research. They can make the difference in ending cancer as we know it. We are now at the tipping point where we can make, excuse me, <laughs> We, can, we are approximately 50% of cancer deaths can be prevented, but more progress needs to be made, and it needs to be made now. We are calling on Congress to maintain that momentum to increase funding for life cancer, saving cancer research. Specifically, we are gonna be asking Congress for an increase of $2.5 billion to fund the National Institutes of Health. We're cutting Cutting edge cancer research is leading to improved treatments that have the potential to save lives of millions of Americans. ACS CAN members play a critical part in holding lawmakers accountable, which is why we need more ACS CAN members. Excuse me, who will use their voice to influence and hold elected officials accountable to make sure our tax dollars are spent on this cancer research. I want you to think about who or what brought you here today and ask that you make a decision right now to join me and thousands of other breast cancer advocates by either becoming an ACS CAN member for the first time or by renewing your annual membership. If you signed up at last year's kickoff, it's time for you to renew your membership. Your $20 donation will be an investment in our efforts to urge Congress to increase cancer research funding. Today, with a $20 donation, you will receive one of our limited edition 2019 Power of the Purse pins. When you wear this purse pin and people ask you about it, you can tell them it is a reminder to you that you have the power of the purse. You have the power to hold lawmakers accountable to playing the, their part in the fight against cancer. Is anybody ready to join me? Pick up an ACS CAN membership form. They are on your tables. If you need more, let us know. Um, I want to get as many ACS CAN members signed up. Um, so we are here. Thank you very much. Thank you for my stammering. Um, <laughs> and thank you for coming tonight. You're great, Marianne. So we have united today to make strides against breast cancer, to ignite our passion to attack breast cancer from every possible angle, and to show the world what unites us also ignites us. Making strides walks not only raise awareness and funds, they help save lives from breast cancer. And the making strides of Sarasota Manatee can't happen without you. The people are in this room and the people that you've heard from tonight. So before we say goodnight, could I ask our thrivers to stand up one more time so we can celebrate you. Please stand up and remain standing. Our thrivers. Now, can our survivors please stand up and remain standing and join our thrivers?
Now, if you've been a caregiver for someone with breast cancer, stand up and join our thrivers and survivors. If you've ever lost a friend or loved one to breast cancer, please stand up. If you've signed up to be a part of Making Strides as a team leader or a team member this year, please stand up. And if you want to end breast cancer once and for all, please stand up. Take a look around this room. There is strength in numbers, and breast cancer does not stand a chance. United, we are ignited to make a difference in the fight against breast cancer. Now, as you walked in tonight, there was a raffle. Uh, we have a few people with raffle tickets out. I think we're about ready to do our raffle. Lisa Quinn, our event chair, please give her a nice round of applause, because she, with her, has prizes. So we're giving away uh, the cooler with the wine and a yeah. purse. Is that yes, right? Yes, absolutely. All right, so pink ticket, and you have the number, Lisa? I have the number. All Here right. we go. So for the bag, so if you have your tickets, are you ready? The winner of the bag, the number is 313-719. 313-719. Three, and the name was Amy Smith. You're the winner of the bag. You can pick it up in the back of the room. Congratulations. And this, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> we have a second winner of the cooler, and this is 313718, and that is Amy. She also won the cooler. So Amy won both of them. She I must have bought me. a lot of. She needs to buy me a lot of tickets she, later. She's lucky tonight. So yeah. thank you. I also want to remind you to go to our our Stride store. We have a lot of great items for sale, and that money is all being donated as well to the American Cancer Society. So please stop by our store on this this right hand corner. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. The last thing I'll ask you to do to put in your phones is to save the date. Saturday, October 19th at Nathan Benderson Park as we make strides against breast cancer. Thank you for being here.